What's up guys, hope you all are doing well. I wanna thank Celsius for being a big sponsor of the 2022 Shaw Classic and a sponsor of the Log Press event, which was incredible. If you're excited about 2023, you are in luck because the tickets for the Shaw Classic will go live on November 3rd. If you're a Shaw Elite Club member, you will get early access. Hope you enjoy this Log Press event. It was incredible. All right, so we are just about to get it ready underway here on the first event. Terry, look at the log weight. You've got 384, 10, and 440. And a minute ago, you were explaining to me, this is really a strategic thing because you could go out and do one or two on 440, and that's going to trump something that does four or five on 410 or 380. Yeah, I mean, it definitely adds a different um, element to the event. I mean, I, I assume Brian's doing this because he wants to, to favor the strongest guy, you know, not the conditioning. So if a guy goes out and does 10 with a 380-pound log, he doesn't want that person beating the guy that does the 440 because the guy doing the 440 is clearly stronger. So, yeah, it's definitely a different spin, and obviously, you know, it is going to be tougher for the guys to gauge which weight they're going to be lifting because they are tired from yesterday. So that's definitely going to add an extra spin to it. If you were competing and you look like you could still compete, what would you do Oh, for, on day two? For, for me, yeah. I, would, I would probably still try and attempt, you know, I mean, I was always a terrible log presser. For me, I'd probably be going for the lightest one anyway. But and just um, go for as many as you can. Yeah, but some of the guys, obviously, you know, if they're sort of like not sure about a weight, it's probably going to be better to, you know, go on the one below. But the knockout punch would really be if you go out there and get that 440 and throw up one or two, you're you're kind of locked into a top position. Yeah, for sure. There's you know there's all, a lot of the guys here are capable of that sort of weight, but whether they're capable of that right at this precise moment is a different different question. You look at a guy like Bobby Thompson, who this is his event. I yeah. mean, he's he's. Do you have any doubt in your mind that he's going to go out and go 440 and try to get multiple on the 440? Yeah, I would. I mean, I would imagine he's still going to be good for a couple of reps at least on the 440. He's a very strong log presser, current American record holder. So, yeah, guys like Bobby will still go out and still be able to lift that. But the guys that are, you know, 200 kilos, 440 pounds is a questionable lift. You know, they're they're obviously going to be looking at a game maybe to 410 instead. All right, we are set to go. Let's go down to the floor and get this thing underway. All right, so Terry, the first man up will be Gabe Pena. He's going to come out. Now, the question is, does he have to declare right off the bat where he's going to go, or can he get a grip on something, start somewhere? I mean, this is this is kind of a new, I guess, a new feeling out period for these guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not actually 100% sure on that, um, whether they can attempt a heavier weight and then drop down to the lighter ones, or they've got to declare which weight they're going for. I mean, hopefully they can attempt the heavier log and then drop down to the lighter one. I'm pretty sure that's what the case is. So... You know, if they're quest you know, if it's a 50-50 lift for them, they'll still go in for the heavier weight, hopefully. All right, so it's up to the judges. So he's going to start out 380. Gabe Pena, the 32-year-old from Texas. Yeah, I mean, I would say Gabe, I mean, obviously, amazing deadlift, uh, great at some of the other events. This is probably his, his Achilles heel. So, you know, just perhaps playing it safe a little bit. And that gives you an idea of what that 440 is like. I mean, he's 380, and the fans are into it here. Yeah, I mean, these guys are probably still going to be like 10% down on power from yesterday. So what would have been comfortable lifts from yesterday are probably not going to be this morning. I know we've talked about it before. The elevation's a factor. He did four events yesterday's a factor. And now he comes out, he's got to get one up. Yeah, and he lifted big on that deadlift as well. That would have taken a lot of energy out of him. All right. So that'll give you an idea of just how heavy this apparatus is. So for those of you who are thinking, hey, why wouldn't you go out and just go after her 440 pounds? Gabe Peña is a pretty strong guy, and he struggled with 380. So Jerry Pritchard now steps up. It looks like his intentions are also to go with a 380-pound start things off, maybe get a feel for it. I mean, at this point, you get one in the bank, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, um, he's already seen Gabe go out and struggle with it. That might have played a factor as well. I mean, 380 pounds is still a big, big, big weight. I think this is the thing, like, for anyone that is watching back home, remember that they did basically a whole competition yesterday. 
and anyone that competes themselves know how sore you are the day after a competition. So these guys are really going to be feeling it today. Now they give them a little more time on this one, Terry. They get 90 seconds. So this is a case where you could regroup a little bit, take 10, 15 seconds, and then get another shot at it. But at this point, Jerry's just not, he's just not looking very comfortable with this. No, I mean, I know Jerry's had some issues with a bit of a hip injury for a while. He said to me on, when we, we travelled out here, we, we actually travelled from the airport together. It's a lot better than it was, but it's still not 100%. Not feeling it. So Jerry Pritchard will bow out with a wave to the crowd. In his absolute prime, that even after a day of competition, that 200 kilo, 440 pound log would be no problem for Big Z, but... You know, um, obviously he's at the latter end of his career. It's great to see him out, he's still doing it, and the fans are obviously loving him. But you know, he's attempting the, the lighter one as well. 47 years young, and Zadrunas just strolls up to the 380 pounds. The place is gonna go nuts. The Budweiser Event Center, they're gonna go crazy if he gets this up. Ah, there you go. There you have it. See how many he'll go for. Three hundred and eighty pounds for forty-seven-year-old, four-time world strongest man champion Zadrunas Savickas. I think this is a testament to how hard the show's been already. Because although Z perhaps isn't what he once was in terms of log pressing, he's still, still very, very, very strong. So the fact that he's going for the lighter log and he's, yeah. you know, got two reps and then just failed the third, you know that they're really feeling the pace of this competition. Give it to him? I don't think they gave that. I didn't see the down signal from Chad there. Man. Very strict refereeing, but you know, they've been fair all the way through. They've been strict on everybody, and you know, that that's all you really want from the referees. So long as they're consistent, that's the main thing. Constantine comes into this event currently sitting in sixth place with a total of 34 points. Yeah, if he's going to break onto that podium, he needs to really make a move right about now. Oh, look at this. Again, very consistent with, a, with what the same situation with Big Z. Was you it know, the shaking of the arms or not the lockout of the elbows? Yeah, not quite locked out, but... You know, I, I've seen worse given, but like I said, Chad's, Chad's a strict referee, yep. and, and that's, you know, you know where you stand with him, as so that's fine. As long as he stays consistent, I think the athletes are, you know, we get it. Exactly that. I always think that it's better for refs to go more um, strict than, than being a little bit soft, because when they go soft, someone tends to get away with more than everyone else. So Constantine gets one up, but is not credited with it because it was not a lockout as deemed by the officials, and the second one didn't seem as comfortable. Chad steps up, head officials going to get a close look at this one, Maxime Boudreau now. As he straps in, hands on the bar, 380 pounds. Got it. That was a nice lift. Oh, look at this. Oh, he's going for it. Here How we go. This? They're loving him in Loveland. This could be huge points for him if he gets this one. This is 410. He got it! Yes. He's going for the 440, or is he gonna stay put? He's thinking about this. I think he's gonna go for it. Another 410? Oh, no. We're going for the 410 again. Yeah. I think this is gonna be big points for Maxine. 
two laps on this is going to be huge. No matter what, he's in first place right now. He just doesn't have the drive in the leg, but wow, what a performance from Maxine. Kevin Ferris now, 32 years of age, out of American Fork, Utah. He's going to go 380. Great lift. He looked really fired up for that coming out. Yep. Really focused. He's going to stay there. He's going to move on. So if he stays here, this is more of a strategic move. If he can get multiple at 380, he'll slot himself into second place for the time being. What a great lift, what a great effort, that was fantastic. I'll tell you what, I'll give that one to the fans here, they got it. They got him to the lockout. I've got to say, the atmosphere in here at the moment is absolutely incredible. The crowd are getting behind the guys so much. I don't think he'd have got that either if, he, if he'd not got that chill. I'll be amazed if he can get this one up there. Come on, Kevin. But he got the two. I would imagine we're gonna see Trey and Alexi, those guys, all having a go at the 440 pounds. I see that, that that's gonna be um, something that they would both attempt. Such a precarious place to have that weight sitting on your chest and just. Yeah, is the, you, you leave it sitting there too long and you'll pass out. Gabriel Rion, Canada's strongest man in 2021, 10th place in the most recent world's strongest man in Sacramento, California. Looking for one rep here at 380. Just not quite there. You can see with a lot of the guys, they don't have that real snap in the legs like they normally do. And that's probably just going to be fatigue from yesterday. And let's not forget the last event they did yesterday was also a pressing event. It was the dumbbell. So these guys' shoulders and quads are going to be pretty beaten up from that. At this point, Terry, if you were coaching him, would you tell him just about, I mean, is he exerting energy he doesn't need to do? Yeah, at this point, because I would say from the first two attempts, he's not going to get this. So I probably would tell him to leave it and save the energy, but... Obviously, with a crowd screaming at him, he wants to try again. Good effort for Gabriel Rayon, but it's just not happening today at 380. So he'll go back and get ready for the next event, which will be the frame and arm over arm medley. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that Ivers, when fresh, can, can lift that sort of number, 200 kilos, no problem. So, yeah, he's obviously feeling the fatigue. pounds there's a rock solid lift as well there see his yeah. feet didn't move at all locked it out straight away and got the down call he made Locked the up. he made the referee's job really easy Ivar's schmuck Stellas of Latvia going for two one more we'll put him in second place At this point, would you have gone to the jump up to the next weight, or do you think you stay at the 380? He's, he's obviously not feeling confident at that next weight, but you know, I would say probably if he'd have gone in straight away to the 410, he might have had a chance of getting his judging by the way that first lift went up. Always going to be a gamble though, because if you go for that bit bigger weight and then have to drop back down, you're wasting a lot of energy.
Celsius. Essential energy. Live fit. And he, and he loves the crowd. Yeah, he does. And he's one of the real up and coming strongmen that are around at the moment. A lot of potential. You know, possibly a future world strongest man winner. Oh, here we go! I don't know if the rope just slipped on him a little bit there. Yeah, it's one of those ones where hey, it seemed like a good idea at the beginning. Now he's like, okay, I'm going to step back to 380. Yeah, just being able to hold it on your chest, Terry, I mean, that is... I mean, it was, you know, he went for a gamble there. You know, if he'd have got that 410 and the clean would have gone up nicely. You know, it had got him huge points, so he gambled a little bit. It didn't pay off, but I respect him for going for it and, and having that sort of intention. He's obviously here to come and try and win this event. We don't want to see everyone playing inside, yeah. do we? So here's my question strategically. Do you think he burned too much energy going after that 410 first? Yeah, it certainly looks that way. I mean, if he was confident of getting 410, I'd imagine he'd probably walked up to around 370 backstage. He's probably very confident that 370 wouldn't be a problem. Obviously, then he's moved on to it and struggled with it. Well, Evan always puts on a good show, but unfortunately he walks away this time as he made an attempt at 410, and then he dropped back down to 380. Just didn't have the drive to get it up and get that rep. It looks like he's walking towards that big one. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Here we go. Bobby Thompson will go into first place if he gets one rep here at 440 pounds. You see the intention straight away. He was walking out there totally focused on that last log. And the phones are out ready to record. Does he get it? Just struggled a little bit with his balance there, but I mean, I would say that the power's probably there as long as he hasn't wasted too much energy. Do you tell him to drop back to 410 and just get one rep in so he's. Yeah, I mean, I think he's going to have one more crack in it. He can just get his balance a little bit quicker. This could go up. Come on, oh! So, so close. So close. So he's going to drop back now. And 410 is going to probably feel like... It's another thing that a lot of people sort of don't factor in. Is sometimes in these arenas, the lights can really throw you off of your balance as well. Where you're looking up and you've got the log on your chest, sometimes the lights are right in your eyes and things like that. Uh-oh. Oh, that don't look good. And he's grabbing at his right hamstring at this point and uh, may have overexerted on that last one. I, you know what? Strategically, might not have been the best maneuver, but he went for it. Yeah, and um, I mean, and he was so close as yep. well. The other guys as well. I mean, he, he knows his role within the sport in terms of he is a figurehead, one of the real superstars of the sport, and he wants to pay back to the other guys so everyone else gets a share of it all. And um, yeah, I mean, Brian's been a great friend of mine for a long time, and it's fantastic to see some of the things he's doing for the other guys. Here we go, Brian Shaw, 410 pounds. There you go, he gets it. Now the question is, does he have another one in him? He looked happy with that though. I mean, he really had to fight for it, but he definitely looked pretty happy after he got that. Still knows that Trey Mitchell, Alexei Novikov are still to come. Him getting that one rep on that still puts him up in the big points though. So, you know, that was a, that was a big, big thing for Brian there. Oh, oh wow. there you go. The second one, Terry, the speed. It was because the clean was so much smoother. He just wasted no energy on the clean whatsoever. If he gets this one, he goes into first place. 
Holy smokes, that second one was rapid. Ryan Shaw for the lead. This is huge for Brian if he gets this. Absolutely huge. Checking the time, and he's going to bow out. But two very impressive lifts at 410 pounds. Wow. So Brian is the new leader. Second rep was incredible. Yeah, that, that second one was. It was how powerful for me, like looking at it, it was how powerful he was on the clean. It was just so explosive, wasted no energy at all. Hooper currently sits in third place overall on 45 points, a half a point ahead of Brian Shaw. Yeah, he knows he needs at least two reps to stay ahead of Brian. If he only gets the one, obviously, then Brian's going to live in front Got of him. Got it. Oh, is he going to step around? There we go. Can he be the first person to do it? They are loving him here at the Budweiser Event Center. If he gets this lift at 440, he will go into first place. He's some special talent, is Mitchell. He's absolutely incredible. He's come out of nowhere and to be lifting these sort of weights at the stages and his career is just unbelievable. Oh! Oh my God! Man, the fact that he held it there that long, give him half a point. Oh. oh. Wow. So close. Yep. So, close. so he's going to come back to 410 and see if he can get one more up, which will put him in a tie with Brian Shaw. The thing with Mitchell as well, we could see him come on strong. He's a former, oh, no. former marathon runner and things like that. He's got great conditioning, great fitness. We could actually see him getting stronger through the rest of the yeah. competition compared to the other guys. What a great attempt at that yeah. ball, ball week. Fantastic. In the log press, it'll be Trey Mitchell and then Alexei Novikov. They are tied on the overall with 54 points. And this is an opportunity for one of them, Terry, to take this lead, take this win, and the 15 points that would go with it and get some separation. Yeah, because there's been a lot of close close results on this event. You know, if one of these guys wins the event and then the other one sort of places, you know, only gets the one rep on the on the 410 or maybe you can't even hit the 410, it's going to be huge. Trey Mitchell the third out of Lumberton, Texas, 6'4", 380 pounds, and the 29-year-old wasting no time stepping right up to 440. This would be a knockout blow what would put him in first place if he can get one rep. He's definitely backing himself, and he looks really confident. And Got he was it! Right to be. That was incredible. He was definitely right to back himself. That was a great lift as well. It didn't even look that hard. What do you think? Do you go for another one, or do you let it stand? Oh, I mean, Alexi, in, when he's at 100%, he's capable of that sort of number, and you can never count him out, but... I've got to be honest, I don't think he's going to need this second rep. That is superhuman strength from the Texan. Trey's log pressing has always been strong, but he's obviously come on even more from last year. I mean, looks so strong. The defending champion from 2021 with a huge flex on the rest of the competition as Trey Mitchell gets not one but two presses with 440 pounds, goes into first place. So Alexi's going to start out. This is interesting. Alexi's going to start out at 380. I'm a little bit surprised at that, I've got to yep. be honest. I was expecting at least a 410. Okay, so he's good. No problem. Maybe that's Alexi's warm-up lift. He might have just wanted to get himself set, yep. get used to lifting out on that platform. And that is a strategic move, Terry. I mean, he, he's going to be ahead about four or five guys that got no reps. Yeah. So if he gets this 410, this will put him in the top five.
Oh, wow. Okay, so Alexi's done some math backstage. Yeah. He knew exactly what he needed to do and the points he needed. Knowing that he probably couldn't get the 440, he went out and got one at 410. He's going to take that top five. Yeah, and he's obviously done it with, without wasting any energy and tried to conserve himself as much as he could. So a three-way tie for third place. Brian Shaw will take second place, and Trey Mitchell will get the victory. Yeah, so Trey, Trey effectively will be three, three points ahead of um, Alexia after that event. He's still got a long way to go, and obviously the next event is probably going to be Trey's Achilles heel. So Trey Mitchell gets the win as he takes the points, and he's now down with Matt Eisman did it twice as Nick pointed out the only other athlete who's done a log that heavy in competition for two reps is Big Z man you are one of the legends you are great how did that feel very excited about that training for a log went really well and it's like talking to my coach it's like yeah you can do it be smart about it and only needed to one rep but just to be safe if Novikov you know, was right after. You can never count him out, so it's like, better do a second rep. <laughs> now, was it just me, or did his second rep, your second rep, look easier than the first? What did you learn? What was different? Well, these are brand new logs, uh, Matt. Like, Brian had these specially made for this competition, so, you know, getting that first rep just had to get a little feel for it, and, you know, that muscle memory for the second one went, it meant, felt a lot better. Well, Cowboy, you're the defending champion. You and Novikov were tied. Now you're in the lead by yourself. Three more events. You're going to close this thing out, big man? That's the plan. Ladies and gentlemen, let it hear Trey Mitchell. Todd Harris, Terry Hollins with you here in Loveland, Colorado, the third annual Shaw Classic. That was impressive performance, I think. Trey going out there being the defending champion knew exactly what he needed to do. Yeah, he just went out there and sort of asserted his authority, walked straight up to that last log, looked totally confident, did it not only once, but then did it a second time just to be sure, but absolutely incredible lifting. Terry, as you look at this sport, and you've been in it for a long time, the progression of what these athletes are able to do, not discounting what you guys did back in the day, but... Man, that was amazing what they're doing now. Yeah, I mean, the, the progression's been huge, and these guys are so talented, so well-trained. You know, they do all the right things. There's so much else going on behind the scenes in terms of looking after themselves, recovery methods, diet, everything else. And, I mean, they're, they're absolutely incredible. All right, so we've got three more events to go before the champion is crowned. It's going to be the medley next, and it is going to be on. Um, right now, let's send it back down to the floor here at the Budweiser Event Center. Cover. Essential Energy. Live fit.